Uh, good evening, friends, and thank you very much for being patient uh, and willing to stay back after the event for this uh, press event. As is usual, what we will do is we will ask the External Affairs Minister to make a few brief opening remarks, following which we will have a few questions. However, given the limitations in terms of time and that the External Affairs Minister has to go ahead to his next event, we will limit the questions to just a few, maybe five or six. With that, I will request the External Affairs Minister to make his opening remarks. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, uh, welcome to uh, this uh, press briefing on the occasion of the uh, ASEAN-India Commemorative Summit. Uh, you've participated in this, so you have uh, a good idea of what, what transpired today. I must uh, acknowledge uh, the presence of Secretary East, Mr. Sanjay Singh, uh, on whose shoulders, uh, in fact, with, along with his uh, very, very efficient team of officials, uh, on their shoulders rested the entire responsibility. And I do believe that you will, uh, you will acknowledge and accept uh, that this is uh, this commemorative summit uh, inaugural the plenary that you have seen has gone off remarkably well and uh, they deserve to be warmly congratulated uh, as you saw this is uh, indeed the uh, celebration of the 20 years of uh, asean india relations and the 10th year of uh, the the summit level partnership that we have uh, we have developed and this was co-chaired uh, by uh, the uh, Prime Minister of India uh, and His Excellency Samjek uh, Hun Sen, the Prime Minister of the Kingdom of Cambodia. And we, uh, it was attended by nine uh, heads of state or governments and the Vice uh, President of Philippines. Uh, this, uh, we will uh, remind you that the Sectoral Dialogue Partnership was first established in 1992. Uh, a full dialogue partnership uh, in 1996, and the summit level partnership uh, was established in 2002. Uh, the second plan uh, of action for the 2010-2015 uh, years is progressing uh, and is progressing well. The ASEAN-India Trade and Goods Agreement has already contributed as, uh, as uh, some of the uh, participating countries have indicated uh, have increased uh, in many fold ASEAN India trade, uh, which now stands at about 80 uh, million US dollars, with our target of 100 million uh, US dollars for 2015. The uh, big news, of course, today for you is that the, uh, as the Prime Minister said, the ASEAN India Dialogue Partnership uh, has uh, been elevated to the level of strategic partnership uh, at this commemorative summit. Uh, the leaders have uh, today also adopted a vision statement, as was mentioned in the end, um, which emphasizes the collective vision for future of ASEAN-India strategic partnership for 2012 to 2022. Uh, the text of this vision statement will be uh, made available to you shortly. Uh, in this vision statement, India uh, has reiterated its commitment to a stable and peaceful uh, regional environment for pursuit of sustainable development in the ASEAN region. Uh, the vision statement gives direction for further intensification of cooperation in the spheres of political security, economic, social, cultural, and connectivity pillars through specific concrete measures. Uh, on the political security front, uh, ASEAN and India share a vision of a peaceful, prosperous, resurgent Asia, which will contribute to global peace and security. Uh, we hope to further our cooperation to meet traditional and non-traditional challenges, maritime security, and freedom of navigation, combat piracy, and improve our disaster mitigation and search and rescue capabilities. In the economic field, the uh, leaders uh, as you would have noted, welcome the successful conclusion of negotiations on the ASEAN-India trade in services and investment agreements, something that we worked on for a considerable time. The signing of these agreements will facilitate 
further integration, uh, economic integration between ASEAN and India, uh, which is uh, a very important objective. We have agreed to organize multi-sectoral st strategic economic dialogues. Uh, we've reiterated our commitment to achieving a target, as I said, of 100 uh, billion for 2015, and to promote private sector engagement, including through PPP linkages. Uh, it also recognizes the need to ensure long-term food security and energy security in the region, and the use of appropriate technology towards this end. On the socio-cultural uh, front, we have agreed to intensify efforts to preserve and restore civilian, uh, civilizational heritage monuments uh, in the ASEAN countries. In this, India will make a major contribution and will continue focus on bringing to the development gap, gaps, bridging the development gaps amongst the ASEAN countries, especially in Cambodia, uh, Laos, PDR, Myanmar, uh, Vietnam, uh, which we consider as the CLMB countries. In the important strategic priority of connectivity, the vision statement encourages enhancing the interface between ASEAN Connectivity Coordinating Committee and India's inter-ministerial group on ASEAN Transport Connectivity. The vision statement reiterates ASEAN-India commitment to assist the completion of the very, very important india myanmar thailand trilateral highway, uh, its uh, extension to Laos, PDR, and Cambodia, and then connection to Vietnam to develop the Mekong-India economic corridor. Uh, in the ASEAN and Indian officials will, in months ahead, uh, look at the formulation of specific initiatives to achieve the objectives stated in the vision statement. These initiatives will be funded through the ASEAN India Fund, the ASEAN India Green Fund, and the ASEAN India Science and Technology Development Fund. Uh, India had announced uh, US $50 million to the ASEAN India Fund in 2009, and now the Prime Minister has today announced a commitment to augment this contribution by another 50 million US dollars. The vision statement we believe will strengthen our bond and carry relations to their logical next higher level. I will now be happy to answer the questions that you've been told I will answer. Thank you very much. Yeah, Mr. Venkat Narayan. Mr. Minister, India and ASEAN are among the most dynamic economies uh, in the world. Ten years down the line, where do you see these two regions um, being on the world map? And China, do you expect China to sort out its problems with India and ASEAN? And if you include China in the whole region, it will, every second person in the world will be from this part of the world. What do you think will happen ten years down the line? Thanks. Well, I think anybody, uh, uh, any serious observer of international relations uh, will tell you that uh, and I'm sure that you will tell ourselves uh, that uh, the relations uh, between India and China are going to be very significant in every dimension to the world of tomorrow and indeed uh, will dominate the 21st century. Um, and here in the, in the entire fabric of this relationship, uh, we have to weave in our respective uh, interaction and engagement of ASEAN because I think a lot of the energy, uh, economic energy, will come from, from the ASEAN countries. They are and have been uh, uh, known as the Tigers of Asia. And uh, in that sense, uh, the Tigers of Asia and the Elephants of Asia have to combine together to provide, uh, provide a, a, stable, a stable economic, political and uh, security uh, atmosphere. I, I do believe that, uh, that we, uh, we, we cannot uh, completely ignore issues that arise from time to time between all of us, uh, bilaterally, separately, sometimes in the, in the multilateral field. But I think they are all too small compared to the enormous advantage of cooperation and friendship uh, between all of us. And I think we all know this. China knows it, India knows this, and every country in the ASEAN uh, knows it. And I think that's the spirit in which we meet, and in that's the spirit in which we will resolve our problems. There is too much to lose if we don't uh, overcome issues that for one reason or another 
arise from time to time or have plagued us for a very long time. But I have an optimistic view. I believe that uh, any negative dimensions of our relationships are far too meager uh, to, to in any way retard the enormous potential of growth on the positive side. Manish Chan. Almost every ASEAN leader here spoke about, and also our Prime Minister spoke about, deepening strategic content of India-ASEAN relationship. Uh, could you please uh, amplify what would that mean on the ground in terms of in what areas, specific areas, we are going to see escalation? Maritime security is one of them. What would this strategic partnership mean in reality? See, there are two aspects, two dimensions of that. Uh, one dimension of that is that you should have the wherewithal for strategic uh, uh, reliance on each other. And their connectivity, uh, both economic and physical connectivity, are extremely important. And as you saw, the Prime Minister actually spoke of digital connectivity. Uh, he spoke of uh, road connectivity. Now, we are already, I think, working uh, fairly, fairly in a fairly advanced uh, stage on uh, connectivity by air. Uh, when, you have, when you have connectivity and then you have instruments of intervention in each other's need, be it economic need, need, physical need, uh, that gives you, get, that gives you the, econom the strategic dimension, that dimension that you require. Um, our ability to, to coordinate for uh, relief work, for instance, our ability to, uh, to do disaster management, for instance, our ability to... Uh, to, to have extensive dialogue to ensure that, that no untoward development casts a shadow on, uh, on uh, peace and prosperity in the region, and our ability to dialogue on every, every issue that could have adverse impact on our prospects. I think all that, are, these are all building blocks of, a, of strategic relationship, and they've been, I think, fairly well documented in the vision statement. But as we've said, uh, officials now have to put together to, to take this to the level of deliverables, something that we can measure in terms of, of uh, gain that we get every step. So that, and the fact that we meet every year uh, would give us an opportunity to take stock that we are actually moving forward rather than in the standstill situation. Elizabeth? Uh, sir, uh, I, what I wanted to ask about uh, was the FTA negotiations. Uh, I believe the talks have been con concluded, but uh, the Prime Minister had expressed the hope that it would be signed, uh, you know, uh, in time for this um, uh, summit. So is there anything which is holding up the signing, and is it, pos is it possible to follow the roadmap set by uh, the Prime Minister of Malaysia when he said that, you know, this thing should commence by 2013? Well, we've, uh, uh, we've concluded negotiations. They were tough and difficult and uh, for good reason. But uh, the good news was that even before we came to the plenary, uh, we had uh, uh, expressed uh, satisfaction that, that we've reached conclusion of those negotiations. Now, whatever follow-up uh, on that is necessary will, will take place. But you can be sure that there are no, uh, uh, there are no hiccups left and there are no... Uh, no rough edges uh, left for us to address. The negotiations have been completed successfully. Then will they be signed? Well, obviously, if you if you uh, if you are successful in your negotiations, there's nothing that stops you from signing. But obviously, there are some steps to be taken towards organizing the signing ceremony. So now it's only the formalities that are left to do. I think the substantive part is over. Ashwini. Uh, sir, the Singapore PM in his, during the, uh, his speech also, also mentioned about uh, the air, um, air transport agreement with the ASEAN region. Has there been any forward movement on that? Has that been taken up by the Indian side? Well, you know that uh, we've, we are, uh, we've signed bilateral agreements with uh, individual countries and the latest being what the Prime Minister uh, signed with Myanmar when he was there during, during May uh, this year. Uh, giving fifth freedom to, uh, uh, to our, uh, us to be able to operate. And I would imagine that that should be a very attractive proposition for various uh, airlines in India.
to travel to ASEAN and particularly to Myanmar, which we believe is a, is a stepping stone to the larger ASEAN region or a bridge to the larger ASEAN region. Now, I, I do know that the, the airline sector has been a bit stressed in the recent past, but things are beginning to improve, and I hope that uh, in the months to come, we will possibly see greater expansion. As far as, uh, uh, as, far as the uh, ASEAN-wide uh, uh, matters are concerned, as you can see, our, our uh, uh, groups that are, that are addressing transport issues we we'll look at this as well, but the bilateral bilateral agreements uh, do not uh, don't don't uh, either detract from what we want to do uh, ASEAN-wide, and certainly in many in many ways they will actually contribute to the ultimate uh, package that we will be able to work out with ASEAN. Vijay, yeah. uh, the Vietnamese Prime Minister he referred to the crisis in South China Sea and also mentioned China, and also uh, expected that India should play a, a role, you see, in conflict resolution. What is the response? And secondly, what is uh, going to be time frame for this trilateral connectivity in the ASEAN-India region? Well, as far as the second question is concerned, the time frame is 2016. Uh, we will, uh, we will meet, meet the deadlines. There are, there are a few difficult uh, uh, things to be uh, to be resolved, but uh, I think we are reasonably certain that the deadlines 2016 will be met. Uh, as far as the other issue is concerned, uh, doing something about conflict includes not doing something about conflict. Uh, sometimes you let conflict resolve itself because there are other there are other better ways of it getting resolved than you're in interfering or intervening in it. There are, there are fundamental issues there uh, which uh, do not require India's intervention, but in terms of some perceptions that need to be either received or conveyed within the larger ASEAN family and the uh, India-ASEAN dialogue, um, I think those, those uh, have gently been done already. But I think that there are some issues that really need to be resolved between, uh, between the countries concerned, uh, issues of sovereignty between the countries concerned, and we see no reason why, uh, as good neighbors, given that there is this larger landscape and fabric of ASEAN within which everybody interacts, that they won't be able to find a solution. Uh, let's just take it a step by step instead of, of rushing in and complicating the matter any further. Uh, last question from uh, Naveen. Sir, a little digression from uh, ASEAN. Sir, two Italian Marines are granted Christmas break. Uh, is India going soft on them, sir? I, are you suggesting that uh, some orders have been passed by court? We've seen the orders that have been passed by court. Uh, it's, not, it's neither being harsh nor being soft. I think uh, the courts have to decide courts have to decide what conditions have to be imposed. And I, I think you're aware that in the earlier order, the courts had allowed a certain relaxation of conditions of bail, but on the other hand, also restricted movement and kept them confined to uh, one particular guest house. Now, if the court in its wisdom has felt that some more conditions can be relaxed, even temporarily, uh, because this is Christmas time and you uh, uh, people have to uh, show some some degree uh, some some degree of of uh, generosity uh, and compassion at the time of Christmas for families to be together. Uh, we should respect what the court has done. I think the court must have sought assistance from all from all sides, uh, including from uh, from state lawyers and uh, after that come to some conclusion. I haven't seen the order in detail, but I know broadly speaking that some bail conditions have been waived uh, and some temporary relief uh, in terms of uh, movement has been allowed to them. Uh, we will get the order and read it, but this is entirely a matter between the court and, uh, and the uh, petitioners. Now, if uh, we uh, are asked to convey anything as uh, uh, on behalf of, of the uh, Italian government, because they would uh, presumably communicate whatever they have to through us, we will do so. Uh, the point is uh, that we must not confuse two issues. We must not confuse what the court has to do and uh, with what we do in the normal course in terms of diplomatic relations with friendly countries. 
Thank you very much. With that, we come to the end of uh, this interaction. Just a small clarification. Okay. Um, well, just 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 one correction. Uh, there isn't a there there wasn't a specific further announcement of 50 million. It's the 50 million that has been announced. So don't read it twice. Uh, I may have sounded as I, we were saying it twice. It's the, what, the decision that was taken on 50 million was announced, but it's 50 million, and obviously uh, the funds, uh, funds, when they are used up, uh, then more funds can be considered. But 50 million is what has been announced. So it's not 100 million, it's actually 50 million. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much.